What's up guys? Today we're going to be comparing the 180 mech to a brand new extremely advanced metabot coming out of China that looks like it could completely reshape the competitive strategy of the 2025-2026 Vex IQ game. The 180 mech has been a staple design for a long time, but this new bot it's on a completely different level. So let's go through everything. First impressions, performance, build challenges, coding, driving, judging expectations, and whether you should be building it yourself. First thing I want to check out is these first impressions. Right away, the difference between these two designs is obvious. The 180 mech is small, compact, and built around simplicity and speed, while the new bot doesn't look anything like that. It's bulkier, more complex, and much more refined. While the 180 mech has high driver skill ceiling and scores a lot of points, this new bot not only scores even more points than the 180 mech, but with proper sensors and proper coding will be easier to drive. Easier driving means better consistency. Overall, this new bot is sleek, modern, and every piece of it is intentional. It's clear that in order to build this design, you will need to carefully determine where each of your mechanisms will be before you even start building. Making CADs for this robot is highly suggested. This bot looks much more difficult to build compared to the 180 mech, but will absolutely be worth it as it will score more points and will be much more consistent. Now, let's talk about the advantages after a deep dive. First is the performance. The robot is designed to score more consistently and more effectively, as I've just said, and also more efficiently. One of the biggest problems that teams run into with the 180 mech is inconsistency. If you don't build it perfectly, you will get jams, you will get wobbles, you will get misalignment issues and pins falling off the beams, all these terrible things. But this new bot seems to eliminate all of those weaknesses. The mechanisms are so much smoother, the structure is just way stronger, and the entire design just seems to be more optimized for repeatable performance. Next, the versatility of the bot. This isn't a single task bot. It can handle multiple scoring styles, adapt to different strategies, and execute more complex match plans. You're not locked into just one method of playing. You have options and you can play around with them. Another major advantage is driving. Yes, there are more mechanisms to control, but the robot itself behaves more predictably and with proper code, it can be much, much easier for the driver to handle if you can automate some processes. And once you've learned these controls too, it's actually gonna be easier to drive because everything just works the way it's supposed to. You don't have to rely on awkward techniques or last second adjustments. The robot will just tell you what it wants to do and it'll just do it. And there's also Auton. Because the mechanisms are stable and the structure is clean, your Autons become so much easier to tune, movements are way more predictable, and motors just don't fight against misalignment. You don't have to overcompensate for jank. As a coder, that is a dream. Now onto some of the disadvantages of this design. Of course, no design is perfect, and this one also has its own challenges. The biggest one is probably going to be the building. It isn't necessarily hard to understand as it is just a bunch of simple mechanisms, but it's extremely time consuming to assemble. And especially since all these very simple mechanisms are jam packed into the very small size restrictions that we have for this year, it's going to be a major challenge to fit all of these in. And you're going to be spending a lot of time planning out where each part is going to be, how to mount it, and how to keep everything structurally secure while in the size limit. It's also going to be a big issue when pieces fall out of the robot. Even though this robot seems to be more structurally sound, if at any point in time you have poor build quality and stuff starts falling out, it's going to be a nightmare to put things back together as you're going to have to go dig deep into this big old robot and try to start putting stuff back. This means that building with initial high quality and being careful with the robot, such as when traveling to comps, is a must. Another downside of this bot is newer teams might find it overwhelming. Even though each mechanism on its own is simple, putting them all together and understanding how they interact takes experience. If you're not ready to troubleshoot multiple subsystems at once, this robot will feel intimidating. Now onto a very important warning about judging. This is very important, especially for teams with younger age students, such as elementary teams or teams with individuals of grades 7th and below. Vex has been cracking down on teams who bring advanced robots to competitions but cannot explain how they work. I've personally seen and heard of teams getting pulled aside and risk disqualification because the judges realized that the builders on the team didn't understand their own mechanisms or the coders just couldn't explain the robot's logic. The notebook that they made just didn't even match what was actually built. If you plan to build a robot like this, especially as an elementary or lower graded middle school team, your entire team has to understand the robot, not just the 
builder, not just the notebooker, absolutely everyone. Judges are likely going to be asking questions like, how does this mechanism work? Why did your team choose this design? What is the purpose of this subsystem? Who built this part? How does your Auton control the robot? If you can't explain basic questions like these, you may run into some trouble. And if you choose to build something this advanced, you need to make sure that everybody on the team knows what they're talking about. So now the big question is, will this design be replacing the 180 mech as the dominant meta? And honestly, I think it has the potential. It's faster, more reliable, more versatile, and overall just a much more polished machine. And if enough teams start building it, we could easily see the meta shift. But that doesn't mean 180 mech is dead. The 180 mech is still amazing for teams that want a simple, fast build with easy maintenance, predictable performance, and are just starting to get into the high level of Vex IQ or in these initial stages of being a high level Vex IQ team. The new bot is better, but it's also way more demanding. So instead of one replacing the other, it's more likely that both will coexist in this game as viable options depending on the team's experiences and goals. So now at the end of the day, should you be building this robot? You should build it if you want maximum performance, have the time and experience, enjoy complex builds, can handle heavy maintenance, and you want a robot with a high competitive skill ceiling. You probably shouldn't build it if your team is brand new, you don't have much time, don't like troubleshooting, your team struggles with judging questions, or you want something that's just simple and reliable. Both designs are great. The real question is, which one fits your team? Now, here's just my personal opinion about everything that I've talked about. If you know what you're doing, build it. I have no doubt in my mind that you need to build this robot. This bot will be the most competitive robot in the Vex IQ game this year. But if you are the slightest bit hesitant about any of the things that I've said so far, you may want to steer clear to stick to the 180 mech. But if you're up for the challenge, I strongly urge you to try and shoot the shot to build this brand new metabot. And that wraps it up. If you want me to break down into how this new bot actually works, or if you want some building tips, tutorials, comparisons, or other meta designs, just let me know in the comments or join our Discord. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.